in the last class we discussed about the uh, role of ground water in hydrologic cycle. So, today we will continue our discussion. This uh, ground water represents the important uh, one of the three important systems of hydrologic cycle which can be uh, referred to as a subsurface system of hydrologic cycle. That means, all the activities all the components of hydrologic cycle which are uh, taking place below the ground level. And uh, here let us go to uh, this one. So, the ground water is stored in the below the ground in uh, water bearing layers which are known as uh, aquifers. So, this uh, the storage capacity of these reservoirs. So, that is uh, which are commonly referred to as aquifers uh, as well as the small ground water flow. Uh, because when these aquifers get saturated, so then excess water from these aquifers flow from the uh, from below the ground onto the ground wherever there is a uh, there are streams and other uh, uh, surface uh, water bodies. And so, this uh, storage capacity in the aquifers that is the ground water reservoirs as well as the small ground water flows. So, they ensure a large as well as a distributed source of water supply. So, therefore, the uh, what happens is the uh, water supply the spatial extent gets increased as well as the temporal extent also gets increased. So, that is a major contribution of uh, ground water. Now, let us also see the, uh, the ground water emerging into the streams. So, this helps in sustaining the stream flow over a large space as well as time when the surface uh, runoff is either low or non existent. Say for example, let me refer to you uh, here the hydrograph wherein the plot of this uh, stream flow Q is uh, shown against the time t. So, this is the time t along the horizontal axis and uh, stream flow Q along the vertical axis. And uh, just above that, so there is uh, what is known as the hytograph. So, this is known as the HYE hytograph which is a plot of rainfall intensity I. versus the time t. And uh, here this hydrograph is a plot of the stream flow, this is the hydrograph. So, even though the rainfall is discontinuous that means, the hydrograph starts at this point of time and ends here. But still we see that in the hydrograph there is continuous uh, flow, continuous uh, stream flow. So, here this portion that means, this time duration as well as this time duration after the, the stoppage of uh, rainfall or precipitation. So, that is the due to the ground water contribution to the stream flow. Had this been not there, so then this uh, hydrograph would have been just uh, shown with some lag with respect to this hydrograph, but actually does not happen. So, therefore, so this ground water flow, ground water provides the necessary uh, spatial as well as temporal extent. And here what happens is, so this one because of the, uh, uh, here you can see, so this is the cross section of a stream and uh, the ground water is entering and such a stream is known as an effluent stream, wherein the ground water is entering from the banks as well as a little bit through the beds also maybe into the stream through this what is known as the ground water inflow, which is uh, denoted as Q G I. So, here the water table is above the water level in the uh, stream 
and uh, this difference in the water table will result in the flow of ground water from the banks into the stream. So, here so these uh, uh, through these uh, this uh, hydrograph as well as hydrograph as well as the effluent stream it is evident that this ground water provides the necessary spatial as well as temporal uh, uh, distribution of uh, water supply. And also it is well known that the in many places there are uh, wells and these wells represent the sole source of uh, ground water in many regions of the world especially during summer when there is practically no other uh, source of surface water. And uh, so, this happens generally in almost all years continuously. That means, every summer, so the surface water which is available in the form of surface bodies like uh, tanks, lakes or reservoirs, so that goes dry. So, then it is the ground water uh, which is uh, especially in the wells which will serve as a sole water source in these regions. Now, let me also let us also discuss about the the origin of ground water which provides this necessary uh, spatial and temporal uh, sustainability or uh, uh, distribution additional distribution. So, this practically all the ground water originates as uh, surface water. So, through infiltration through this uh, uh, lateral ground water inflow and uh, so this is known as the natural ground water recharge. So, this uh, by this process the ground water gets the supply and this supply is uh, from precipitation, it is also from stream flow, it is also from the infiltration or seepage from the lakes and reservoirs. Now, many times, so this natural ground water recharge is insufficient. So, in that case we go in for what is known as the artificial ground water recharge and this artificial ground water recharge occurs mainly through excess irrigation. It also occurs through canal seepage and it also occurs through intentional water application. So, here so this ground this artificial ground water recharge will bring about the balance between the ground water uh, supply and uh, the ground water demand. So, wherever the supply is insufficient compared to the ground water demand compared to the water demand. So, there we artificially enhance the, uh, the ground water supply through what are known as the artificial official ground water recharge structures. Many times the sea water also enters uh, through the course into the ground and uh, which may be undesirable, but this also represents the uh, ground water recharge. So, here you can see this is the uh, the fresh water ground water interface, ground water fresh water interface and this is the sea water level and uh, this is the coast, this is uh, below the sea water level, this is above the sea water level and uh, here what happens is the sea water uh, flows into the ground water below the uh, through this uh, QGIS which represents the sea water inflow. And uh, this is undesirable because we know that the sea water is brackish or salty and uh, but what we need for most for many of our activities is a fresh water. So, therefore, this is undesirable. So, in such cases we need to take precautions by extracting the 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 ground water in 
from the wells which are not close to this uh, ground water fresh water interface. So, therefore, in such case if we need to dig a well for uh, ground water extraction. So, here so this is the well we need to see that the bottom of the well is uh, much above the interface between ground water and fresh water only in such cases the we can extract fresh water otherwise what happens is so if the depth of this well is uh, more so that it is very close to this interface of uh, fresh water and ground water then in addition to extracting the fresh water it will also start extracting the uh, brackish or uh, salt water of the sea which has infiltrated uh, through the interface. So, therefore, we should take precautions uh, so that only the fresh water is extracted through the wells whose depth is much above the interface. Now, let me also refer to you about the this uh, the ground water and here. So, this uh, ground water volume is uh, much smaller compared to the, the annual circulation. So, it is um, said that on an average the ground water whose residence time is simply the ratio of the volume divided by the flow rate or the annual circulation. Okay. So, the, the residence time for the ground water shallow ground water that means shallow means I refer to a depth of say 800 meters below the ground. So, in this range that means from the ground surface to 800 meters below ground. So, in this shallow range so the ground water has a residence time of nearly 200 years. Uh, so, therefore, this uh, uh, as you can see so this provides the necessary the water security compared to this the soil moisture which is there from the ground to say 1 meter below the ground it has a residence time of just say 20 percent of the year or say nearly about uh, 70 or 75 days say roughly say 2 to 2 and a half months. So, after that so this uh, soil moisture will uh, will not be there. So, then but this uh, ground water the shallow ground water in the which is existing in the ground water layer between the ground and 800 meters 800 to 1000 meters some people refer to this depth as uh, 1 kilometer or 1000 meters some people refer to this depth as say 800 meters. So, therefore, so this uh, ground water provides a necessary that is a distribution of uh, extra distribution of uh, water supply over uh, time and it also uh, because we can extract ground water through many uh, this uh, sources you know, which are uh, such as wells which we can dig in uh, various areas where we expect ground water in aquifers. So, therefore, so this provides a necessary that is uh, additional distribution of water supply which is spread over time and space. So, this is how so, the ground water is so important to provide that uh, additional amount of water for additional time in additional areas. So, now let us go to the next item of uh, the next article which is the the ground water budget. So, this is also referred to as the ground water balance. Even though it is mentioned here as the ground water budget, essentially it is water balance or uh, water budget. In this case, basically what we do is 
we mathematically express the all the uh, water which is available as water uh, as a supply as well as all the water which is uh, consumed through our uh, water demand. Uh, so, through this uh, what is known as the, the water balance equation. So, therefore, so this water balance or water budget here you can also I am writing this as uh, the water balance or water budget. So, here essentially this is so it is a quantitative statement of the balance between water supply and water demand. And here through mass conservation conservation principle application. So, here what we do is So, in this uh, fluid mechanics so there are three conservation principles and the water is uh, an important fluid for uh, sustaining life and uh, so these three conservation principles are the conservation of mass, the conservation of energy and the conservation of momentum. So, here so this uh, conservation of mass it is also referred to as uh, the continuity equation, continuity equation. So, even though we call here it as the ground water budget or ground water balance, essentially it is water balance or water budget, because in this sense ground water we cannot simply uh, segregate ground water completely, completely from uh, the surface water for the simple reason that. So, there is always an interaction between the surface water and ground water and uh, that is why here what happens is. So, through various activities so the, the various uh, quantities of uh, uh, supply as well as demand are estimated okay. and here so, we can also through mass conservation it is a quantitative statement of the balance between the water supply and water demand through mass conversion conservation principle application. So, here essentially this uh, ground water budget equation is the form of that is the, the total supply that is existing and uh, the total demand that is existing. So, the difference between the supply and the demand will appear as a change in storage. Say for example, if the supply is more than the demand then there will be an increase in the storage. So, essentially if we take a system and in the system there will be some inflow into the system, there will be some outflow from the system and let us take for example, a ground water system. So, which is uh, bound spatially 
and uh, here what happens is so the the inflows to this ground water system so they are essentially from say precipitation or they are also from uh, other uh, water supply uh, such as irrigation or uh, maybe there could be so into this system there may be some uh, uh, lateral inflows so these are all rep these are all the terms which represents the inflow likewise so in terms of the outflow so we can say that is the pumping say for example if i draw this uh, ground water system and uh, here i am so these are the inflow and uh, so this is the outflow and here let me say represent uh, so this so this let me say this is the ground water storage so here so this is the system diagram for the ground water and it will have the inflow from one side of course there may be more the many times the inflow may be from more than one side also and there is the outflow also from uh, many sides and then depending upon this uh, uh, this one i can write the expression as a uh, sum of inflow minus sum of outflow is equal to that is the change in storage so here so coming to this one so there are uh, so therefore what you can what you need to do so this is essentially one equation so therefore we can at the most determine one unknown okay so here as i said the this equation that is the ground water budget equation or the water budget equation so can be written as i minus o is equal to delta s by delta t so this is the total ground water inflow or let us say this is the total inflow and uh, this o represents the total outflow and then this delta s by delta t represents total change in uh, storage volume the same thing we can write it as say this is p plus ir is equal to et so here this p represents uh, let me write all these terms p represents the precipitation ir represents the irrigation this et represents the evapotranspiration plus e plus uh, qp plus minus qg plus qs plus minus uh, delta sm plus minus delta ss plus minus delta sg so here p represents the 
total precipitation over the area so certain depth so so here if p is in terms of certain depth then all other terms also must be in terms of the depth units okay so this may be a certain depth say millimeters and then this ir represents the irrigation supply for that area and that is expressed as certain depth over that entire area next it is the et which is evapotranspiration again expressed as depth from this area in uh, as uh, depth in millimeters next is the evaporation so this is a uh, evaporation over that area again expressed as depth so next is this qp so this qp represents so this is a ground water pumping so that is also expressed as a certain depth in millimeters and then this qg represents so this is the ground water outflow or inflow if it is outflow it will have a positive sign if it is inflow from the neighboring areas it will have a negative sign next is the qs which represents the direct surface runoff again it is expressed in terms of depth and this delta sm represents change in soil moisture storage again in uh, as a depth in millimeters and uh, so this delta ss so here i am writing so this is the change in uh, surface water storage okay and lastly this delta sg represents change in ground water storage so essentially here suppose we need to estimate say the uh that is the suppose we have the the surface component surface zone of a crop so here in this case because we are dealing with the surface zone of a crop so it is uh, required it is uh, required for us to estimate this uh, evapotranspiration which takes place through this crop which is uh, in the surface zone so therefore in here we need to make either uh, estimate or actually measure the precipitation the irrigation net irrigation supply the evaporation which takes place in that over that area then the the ground water the water which has been pumped which is qp and uh, this uh, ground water outflow or outflow whether it is there uh, in that area 
then uh, QS is the uh, direct surface runoff from that area, then the change in the soil moisture through various instruments such as uh, uh, lysimeter or etcetera, then change in the surface water storage as well as change in the ground water storage. If all these terms are estimated, then the only unknown in this case will be this evapotranspiration. So, here this is known, 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 then this is known. So, the only unknown is the evapotranspiration which we can estimate provided all our estimates or uh, estimates or measurements are reasonably correct. Similarly, let us say the we need to estimate this uh, deep percolation. So, in this case, so So, here all other terms, so deep percolation were estimated, we are uh, we need to estimate. So, therefore, we should have the idea about uh, all other terms. So, therefore, here in this case that is the, the change in the ground water storage. Okay. So, this represents deep percolation. So, here only this delta S g is the unknown, whereas all other terms we need to estimate. So, all other terms, so that is the two the supply side terms and then uh, uh, seven demand side times terms that is evapotranspiration, evaporation, then uh, the Q p q g q s delta s m as well as delta s s. If all these either we can estimate or measure with reasonable amount of uh, precision or accuracy, then we can estimate the change in the ground water storage. And in this again if we uh, detect the change in the uh, ground water storage in the top aquifers, then we can estimate the, the deep percolation. So, like this so, this uh, ground water budget it helps us in providing the in applying the mass conservation principle and thereby what we do is we make the we estimate the unknown parameter. It may be whether in case of uh, it may be for a on the surface or it may be above below the surface. So, here so therefore, this uh, estimation of uh, this change in the uh, storage the ground water storage. Okay. So, that is uh, one which is very much. Uh, so, once we do a reasonable estimate of the change in the ground water storage, then we can do a realistic estimate of the ground water supply and based on that we can decide whether this uh, change in the ground water storage whether it is increasing uh, over that area over time or whether it is decreasing. So, accordingly we can decide the strategy if it is increasing then we need to see that this uh, water the ground water storage is within the uh, uh, that is satisfactory zone that means the water table depth is within the satisfactory uh, uh, range of fluctuation. And uh, so, accordingly we may design proper uh, land drainage system as well as subsurface drainage system and then take out the excess water which is very much required which is very much uh, the case in case of uh, the systems where there is uh, there, there is flooding, water logging and uh, uh, things like that. Likewise, suppose due to other uh, reasons, other uh, causes. So, the in a particular area over a particular uh, period of time, so there is a decrease in the ground water storage. So, then that needs to be uh, properly estimated and there, there we need to go for 
say the augmentation measures through artificial uh, ground water recharge, so that the water table or the piezometric surface depth is uh, maintained within the permissible uh, range. It is not too deep, so that the extraction of ground water will become uh, unfeasible, in, uh, will uh, become uh, infeasible or uh, will become uh, too expensive. So, therefore, depending upon this uh, delta S g, whether that is the change in the ground water storage in a particular uh, area over a particular period of time. So, we need to decide, uh, decide whether we need to have a drainage system there or uh, this uh, whether we need to have an artificial groundwater recharge system there. So, this uh, groundwater budget or which is essentially water budget or water balance or groundwater balance equation. So, here we are using this uh, uh, continuity principle, continuity equation or the mass conservation principles and thereby by uh, measuring, actually measuring through field uh, tests or through uh, realistic estimation of uh, certain terms of uh, water supply or water uh, demand. So, we estimate the change in the ground water storage in general or we may estimate other uh, things also like the evapotranspiration as I mentioned earlier. So, this completes the, the ground water uh, budget and uh, now let us go to this ground water level fluctuations. And as I was mentioning, ground water level fluctuations and environmental influence. As I was mentioning, this ground water provides a necessary water security extended over space and time. So, therefore, we should see that the, the level of ground water in the unconfined aquifer it is known as the water table. So, this ground water level, so this is referred to as so water table in the unconfined aquifer or it is referred to as the piezometric surface. in the confined aquifer. So, this uh, we should see that the, the ground water level fluctuation is within the permissible limit and uh, there are uh, various reasons for this uh, ground water level fluctuations. Okay, so, the So, the reasons for ground water level fluctuations. They are that is the stream flow variation. that means the flow in the in a stream or a river it varies with time and that results in the ground water level fluctuation and uh, they are uh, meteorological and uh, tidal influences and tidal phenomena
also urbanization earthquakes and uh, external loads so here so the stream flow variations as i was mentioning so there will be variation in the rate of flow in a stream and that results in the fluctuations in the ground water level in the neighboring areas similarly the meteorological and uh, tidal phenomena so suppose there is a, a rainfall or uh, say flooding or uh, maybe the discharge of water from an upstream area or uh, this uh, uh, maybe other uh, there is a surface flooding or even tidal phenomena in the coastal areas so there will be uh, due to the sea waves so the what happens is the there will be fluctuation in the sea water level and then this fluctuation in the sea water level will give uh, gives rise to uh, the tidal phenomena and then therefore there will be variation in the ground water level similarly urbanization so because of this urbanization so people tend to uh, have more uh, tube wells or uh, extract more ground water through uh, other wells as well as other sources and uh, therefore there is a possible there is a uh, it will res result in the ground water level uh, uh, falling down and then similarly earthquakes so these earthquakes what they do is so because of these earthquakes so there will be cracks in the earth surface and uh, due to these cracks what happens is the surface water in a stream or uh, uh, from the bed or uh, from the banks it uh, just ca it is uh, carried it uh, uh, infiltrates or percolates easily into the through these uh, cracks developed due to earthquakes and thereby so there it may result in the at uh, some places it may result in the lowering of uh, ground water ground water table and at some other places it may result in the raise of the ground water table due to additional due to excessive uh, uh, that is uh, the deposition excessive storage of ground water which has flown through these uh, cracks developed due to the earthquake and largely these uh, external loads so these external loads so maybe um, uh, due to this uh, say for example if there is a dam or uh, other uh, uh, barrage or uh, such uh, hydraulic structures so there what happens is so due to this uh, water load so there will be the raise in the water table or the ground water level and uh, so in the downstream of a dam so there may be lowering of the water table so these are some of the examples of uh, ground water level fluctuations and now let us uh, see little bit about the ground water level fluctuations so here we can make we can classify this into two categories the first one is the secular variation the second one is the seasonal variation so the secular variations are variations over a number of years at a location similarly the seasonal variations are uh, variations 
over different seasons within a year at any location. So, when we consider these ground water level fluctuations, so we should focus on this, uh, the secular variations as well as we should focus on the seasonal variations. So, in this case say suppose uh, I mention so this is the so this is the year and then the so this is the maximum ground water level in this case and of course so let me also represent in this case say here let me say this is uh, say 1950 60 70 80 90 and then say this is 2000 so in this case at a particular location the maximum ground water level in a year from this 1950 onwards. So, it could be it may show a trend like this. So, initially and so here from this it is evident that say for example, from the from very close to the 1980s. So, there is almost uh, continuous decline in the maximum ground water level during uh, that particular year. So, uh, these this is just one example of a secular variation and then similarly the seasonal variation. So, here what we do is within a year we represent the, the variation at any location okay. and uh, so, in this case say if I represent say the months of January, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October. November and then say December. So, in this case at a particular location, so this is the again let me take it as the maximum ground water level. So, in this case say suppose for the Indian condition, so this is uh, uh, the ground water level. So, it may reach the minimum in uh, this one and it may reach the maximum sometime there and then again it may slowly decrease. So, this represents the seasonal variation. So, now Let me also so just a few minutes back in the influence of groundwater in the hydrologic cycle, I mentioned a type of stream which is known as the effluent stream. So, this is the effluent stream in 
in this case so there may be contribution from the bed as well as banks into the stream and uh, this is also referred to as a gaining stream. Similarly, there is another type of stream which is known as a losing stream, wherein this uh, stream is having a high water level and then so because of this there is infiltration from the stream into the ground and uh, this is the refer to as the water table mound and uh, if i draw the so this is the cross sectional view so this is the here this is the influent stream and this influent stream is also referred to as losing stream and uh, so this is the so these are the cross sectional waves so this is the cross sectional view and uh, so this these are the the top views so in this case so in case of this uh, So, this is the flow direction in a stream and so the water will be entering from uh, both the banks. On the other hand in case of an influent stream, so suppose this is the flow direction in this case the ground water, the surface water in the stream will be leaving and uh, flowing as ground water through beds and banks creating a water table mound and uh, so these will be the flow lines from this uh, influent stream. So, effluent stream having uh, the flow lines converging and the influent stream having the flow lines diverging. So, this uh, so we will uh, continue our discussion on the ground water level fluctuation and the environmental influence uh, in the next lecture. Thank you.